suicide on our windscreen. <laughs> I have never hit so many of my entire life in one, in one go. It sounds like a hailstorm. I'm like scared to put the windshield wipers on because it's gonna smear all the cuts everywhere. <laughs> That's pretty full on. There is a lot there. I don't know if you've ever seen that. We had a couple of patches of the way through, but that, that was by far the biggest. And that went for ages. They're still going. It looks like they sit on the road. They look dead, but then all of a sudden when you get really close, they go, oh, they just jump up. And they come all over the top of your car. What's going on, babe? Have a look at the front of the car. <laughs> the front bumper is almost yellow. They're like, Grasshoppers. Yeah, they're like a locust. They're big, dirty locusts. Actually, they got almost like butterfly wings on them. They did look a bit butterflyish, didn't they? They bloody explode, though. Explosive <laughs> locusts. Holy! I think you're gonna have to clean the grill, babe. Look, there's like some of them. They've just put themselves. He's alive, I think. He's yeah, well, moving. Some, some oh, of them, uh, we need to get him out. Uh, some of them have gone through. Oh, really? Oh wow! On the radio. My goodness! Oh wait! I'll find out where the nearest car wash is. I think. That's full on. But they're just everywhere. So many of them driving in town. I don't know how everyone doesn't have crap all over their car. On another note though, we've just pulled into the Boab Caravan Park at Catherine. So yeah. we're just gonna go check in. We're early today, but that's okay, I guess. We're gonna go for a swim. sean has got some commitments that she needs to get yes. to today at about what, 11 o'clock. Yeah, eventually um, I'll show you some links on it so you can see it on Facebook, uh, yeah. Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. yeah, we're helping another YouTube channel out. Uh, some works in the background. But yeah, Catherine, we're here, beautiful weather. It doesn't seem too hot at the moment, but... I think it's the next biggest town we've been to since Mount Isa, I reckon. Well, yeah, it'll be the... Well, this will be the second biggest until we get to Darwin, anyway. Darwin will be our next stop, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. which is the capital, so... Yeah. That'll be big. Yeah, it looks all right here so far. We'll show you yeah. around when we get in. Lovely green grass and everything else. So. French panning. Yeah, can't complain. Do you know what's exciting? That's the first Boab tree you've seen. That's why they call the Boab Caravan Park. It doesn't mean much to maybe some people, but that means that we're like, we're really far north now. Yeah, you don't get these anywhere else. No, it's so cool. So you get up here. Look at the size of it. Bloody girthy. So basically this is a little entrance in here. And it's all one way and it's just one big loop when you come back out this side. So pretty much run of the mill wherever you want to go. Try and pick the shadiest spot and uh, get set up. Ooh, concrete pads and everything. God, we haven't had a lot of this for ages. And grass. Yeah, the grass, grass. is pretty bloody nice, isn't it? Number, what is that? Uh, six. Six bucks. pretty cool so you can just park up on concrete and then here you've got a concrete pad and you've got like a bit of grass around and that that right there is one of the biggest dust storms I have ever actually experienced in my entire life it's already going away yeah it's all the way over there it's blowing across oh that was full on Holy hell, I was out there grabbing a couple of beers out of the back of the fridge. Or out of the back of the car, sorry, out of the fridge. And I looked over my shoulder and out in the distance was just like black and red. And I was like, holy bloody hell. That looks like the biggest storm possible. And it looks like it's got a mixture of dust in it. And that's literally what it is. It's just a massive dust storm. Full blown wind. It's starting to kick in again now, like. See outside? That's the dust storm, Jada. See how it's all red? Yeah. It's everything off the ground in the sky. It's basically. all the red, red dirt. Wow. Being kicked up. 
pretty awesome sunset. <laughs> It looks like a sunset, but just much more dirty. So yeah, that's uh, that was a bit of fun. And the do awning. You know what? We nearly lost. A I nearly lost the whole awning. Like I had it there, and I was like, "Oh, see how we go." The straps are on. She's pretty tight. But then one came flying out of the bloody ground over here. I think it's because when I put it in, it went in quite easily, so it must have been soft ground. So technically, it's my fault because this other one stayed in. But you can see the straps are on it. So to give Chris a little bit of credit, we lost the awning and it nearly went up and over, but it was strapped down. Like it was literally strapped down and it pulled the peg out of the ground. I so think it was, it's more my fault because there is a soft patch over there. I should have put the longer one in, but I never thought we'd ever get anything like that coming <laughs> coming out. It's out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. Literally out of nowhere. It's still thriving over the other side here. It and must uh, be that's just from that way. giving us a whole new perspective of what we're probably going to be in for do you know the one thing i've learned from this is that the awning needs to go down unless we're home i think oh 100 percent yeah from now on we're gonna go back from shopping about 20 minutes ago and then this kicked in i'd hate to be at the shops and know this is coming in and knowing the awnings out because that would have I don't know how it's still in one piece. It all went away fine, so I'm guessing yeah, everything's really still in one lucky. piece. You're not gonna be able to hear anything on the camera. <laughs> I hope you won't hear anything, but I don't know if you can see. Holy hell, like this is what's just gone past us. So she's pretty well blue skies. Just here behind us. But then if you swing around. Look at it out here. That is just pure red dust. Just hanging about. That is crazy. I'm being lazy and I'm still laying in the bed. I'm just doing like admin stuff and that. <laughs> Chris is having a joke up here and I thought it was kind of funny. What'd you say, babe? Who said men can't multitask? Looking after you, giving you attention, making damn coffees for everybody, and you're cooking myself some toast. All at the same time. It's all time. happening this morning. Unbelievable. <laughs> and then Jade is over here doing her school journal. So every day we write a journal about what she did the day before. It says, today I went to the wow. post office. That's what it says right now. So far. I just started, that's why. That's all good. I'll read it in a minute. Oh, morning, guys. Just packing the fridge for a few lunch snacks. A few bits and pieces because uh, we got a fairly big day ahead. We got a few big days ahead, actually. We're, um, Checking out quite a few hot springs, waterfalls, water holes, gorges. Like, there's so much up here. It's ridiculous. Like, we only planned for about two, three days, I think. We're now going through like a little itinerary and like just going through all the different places that are around here. There is tons of stuff up here, Catherine. Like, it is next level. So, yeah, the next three or four days are going to be cram packed full of waterfalls and water holes and just nature really so really excited to get it uh, get out there and have a look and show you guys at the same time and yeah it's gonna be fun kids are gonna love it too it's pretty hot in the morning it's only uh i think it's about 9 30 and i'm already beating up <laughs> sweating up it probably doesn't help that i'm wearing a black shirt either but yeah big oz merch if you uh haven't seen it yet jump on our socials links in the bio Go over and grab yourself a shirt if you want. If not, all good. But uh, every little bit helps. Supports us, guys. Today we're using our new camera, which is a bit exciting. It's um, a DJI Pocket 2. So we're on our way to... Where are we going? Edith Falls. Edith Falls. We're going to go and have a look at the swimming hole and um, check it out. I don't really totally know where we have to go, though. So we're hoping that it tells us. <laughs> Turtle, fish, bats, 
the great bowerbird. Where's the great bowerbird? They call it a love shack, the bowerbird's nest. Very low crocodile risk. That's exciting. Mm. What do you mean by very low crocodile risk? Well, there's a very low exactly crocodile low, very risk. Very low risk. Oh, let's go check it out. Also, it'll be fun because there's a fall and you're not allowed to jump, but at the fall there's this rough current that goes the, the way that the falls is facing. Yeah. So it'll push up and that'll be fun. Really? I think. Oh, wasp nest. That was a pretty big wasp nest. <gasps> so please! So Can please. you show the camera? Um. Yeah. Not too close. And That's you can cool. feel it, they're soft. They are, eh? And how you can tell they have these, oh, they have these things on the tree. They have these things on the tree. Yeah, I actually remember seeing them. Yeah. Well done, Jada. Thank you. How cool is that? People have swum all the way over. This is like just a tease. Is it nice? Yeah, it's not, it's not hot. It's turning into soap. It's not really working, but they are so pleased. You've got to do the right technique. You can't just hold it underwater. You've only got to get a little bit of water on it and then rub them together. Yeah. I'm going to try another one. All right. Did you do it right? Yeah. you got to rub them together, Jada. Yeah, you're scrunching them. You've got to rub. I'll try one more time. Okay. Third time lucky, hey? So we've just come to Edith Falls, we thought we'd come and check it out. We've just learnt that in Northern Territory you need to have a drone license. I think we, we did touch on this, we saw another couple of pages, they had a license but we didn't really know why, we thought it might have been for just one particular park, but it turns out that that's a thing. So um, we can't take drone footage today, but we can show you Edith Falls. And if we get a drone license, maybe we can come back. It's beautiful. Um, for comparison, for comparison's sake, I'm running both cameras at the moment. And I want to be able to see what the difference is like. Yeah. Uh, amazing. What do you think about each camera, Jada? Um, you mean? Which one do you prefer? <laughs> the new one. Why? <laughs> it's cooler. Oh, okay. It's better. Sorry, old GoPro. <laughs> Plus, it does more. So just quickly, show me his head. Big lump -a doodle there. And what happened there? <laughs> well, he, he's got a tendency of climbing onto chairs. Uh, camp chairs, any chair uh, that's in, anywhere in uh, the vicinity of where we are. He was at the information uh, center, climbed on the chair, and went to go lean out and grab the table. <laughs> and totally missed the table and went, whoa, Superman head first straight into the ground. Which is about that much of carpet, and the rest was concrete. So he literally supermaned himself into the floor. Into the floor. <laughs> and didn't he scream? Silly Jack. I think that's probably like his third, fourth bloody egg now. <laughs> it's yeah. just a regular occurrence for him. Well, we've just been out to the falls, had an awesome day out. It was super hot and sunny, and then we were just driving home. 
and we can see out the left hand side there was another storm coming in so this would be the second one in our second day being here in uh catherine um but yeah like it's we've just got home got everything out of the car we were literally just about to go down to the swimming pool and have a bit of a swim but the we storm came in so fast that we had no time to even get down to the pool but she uh yeah she's coming in hopefully it goes away so then we can oh, go to the pool again it will because apparently up here in catherine this happens all the time well it's not catherine it's the top end so well, it's the top end so you've got a dry season and a tropical season and this is the tropical season mm. <laughs> but then you get storms just about every afternoon and it lasts probably anywhere from half an hour to 40 minutes and then it's gone that's exactly what happened yesterday when we had that dust storm mm. and a little bit of rain it was all gone in about half an hour and this one's already starting to die down so so what we're learning about being up here at this time of year yes it's a little bit more hot um, but other than that, and you've got this half hour, 40 minute storm each day. Apart mm. from that, you're pretty good. You probably, the only thing you've got to look after is your awning no. and your outside belongings. And you yeah. not leave too many things around in case there's high wind. But other than that, it's, yeah, it's been cool. It's not too bad, because after yesterday's little storm and whirly wind and dust storm and everything else, outside was so cool. Like, yeah, it was really the nice. temperature was amazing. It was, it's and it was like, like that the most best of, it's been. Yeah, it was like that most of the afternoon. Now, today, we've had a lot more rain than what we did yesterday. I can only imagine how nice it's going to be today. Unless it gets stupid humid. But yeah. then I guess the sun needs to come back out for that to happen. So. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. So I don't really want to risk it that I'll hang out some washing and then maybe there'd be another storm. Like, technically, there's usually just once a day. So if that's the case, then everything's fine. But if it's not, and we've got the awning away because of wind and I've got washing out and then it gets soaking, its purpose so I'm gonna be using the dryer which is the first time in god I couldn't even tell you I don't even remember the last time I used a dryer we always hang our washing out and I used to be a big user of a dryer so they are four dollars so we've got a couple of Maytags here and then a few washing machines as well everything you need for a laundry really Oh, what coins does it take? Ones and twos. Oh my God. I love it when you find a machine that takes ones and two dollar coins. Sometimes you've got four dollars, but it's two two dollars. So frustrating. So yeah, that's good to know. I told you I'd let you know how the temp went after the storm has come through. The fact that this door behind me is open with the aircon on just shows you how cool it actually is it's ridiculous like this is the coolest it's ever been since we have been oh probably ever since we left Cairns to be honest it's been absolutely amazing so yeah really enjoying this we haven't cracked out the chairs in probably oh, three or four days now but um I think we're gonna crack out the chairs and we're gonna sit outside and really enjoy ourselves because this is actually ridiculous we're in far north, Northern Territory, having a couple of beers, not sweating. It's literally like 25 degrees, 23 degrees. I swear to God, that's what it feels like. It probably isn't, but that's what it feels like. But yeah, Sean's just doing a little bit of washing in there, packing it all up. We actually had to use dry because the rain actually lasted longer than a half an hour. Um, so yeah, she's getting all that sorted out. I might sit out here and have a couple more beers and enjoy this uh, this sunset. So, pretty bloody nice. Please sound horn. Saturday. Do you want to do a beep beep? So we've just pulled up to Rare Rocks in Catherine. So uh, this is one of the attractions that we got here that we had on the list. We just pulled in because I wasn't too sure if it was open or not. But um, it just says come in and sound your horn. And we've just done that and literally old mate just come out in about a minute and uh, opened the doors for us and said we're open. So we're going and have a bit of a look around. It's pretty cool so far. Yeah, it looks like a scrappy fish, huh? 
Well, yeah. Let's Who go. This one looks like a tennis racket. Would you? Tennis thing. It does. Oh, yeah. Chucky, chucky. Far out. He's got some stuff in here. Come on, cool. Wow, that doesn't even look like rock. Looks like bloody licorice or something out of a lolly shop. Annie'd love these. She collects magnets from everywhere. And they're rocks. Zebra rocks. Look, zebra! Zebra, zebra rocks. Hey, Jada, look at these quartz in here. They're Holy! Cut into a stone. See it? Check them out. Yeah. It's crazy that rock even does that. Zebra. Look at this. Bridge. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Mum, pyramid, pyramid. Yeah. Um, I've not seen so much of it in one place before. Mum, look, Mum. What? Do you make all this yourself? I do, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. That's so awesome. <gasps> look at this green one. Where did you manage to get so much zebra rock from? Every <laughs> station, only the WA border. Ah. Cool. It's only place in the world where it comes from. Do you remember when Jade found one of these? Yes. Yeah. So apparently they're a mill ball and they're from when they're mining gold. It rolls around and crushes all the gold. Rolls around and crushes all the gold. Out of the um rocks and stuff. Oh wow. It's pretty cool. Yeah, really those heavy. are the uh, Concurry yeah. and the caravan park. I said to Jada that I thought it was um, a cannibal. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, it kind of looked like a downhill slope. I'll come and help you. Just a shout out to Baby Jogger. This pram has been put through hell, absolute hell. And this is not the first time we've been down multiple stairs, that's for sure. We've been down more. But it's bloody durable, I must admit. And I think Jack enjoys it slightly. <laughs> <laughs> well, bring it past the can and it's going. It's going. Bloody durable, I tell ya. I don't know why they call them hot springs because they're definitely not bloody hot. Not even close. I think it's more that it's just spring water, babe. I don't, yeah. I, I'm wondering now, I don't think it's that it's a hot spring. It doesn't say hot spring. What did it? Pretty sure it said hot spring. I'll have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure it did. It's but even, not a hot spring. But even at Mataranka, it's the same sort of setup. Like it's beautiful, crystal clear yeah. water, hot springs, thermal, cool. Like, but they were, not. I feel like they were warmer than what this is. Uh, probably slightly, yeah. But it's still insane that we're in the hottest time of the year and it's refreshing. Oh, it's so good. It's not like you're just sitting in a hot water, hot spa bar sort of water. To give you an idea, imagine in the middle of summer when the heat is too much and you just can't bear it and then you want to go for a swim and you get in a pool and it's like the perfect temperature where you just walk down the stairs you don't have to dip yourself in slowly, you know, there's no shock factor. You just walk in and go, oh, that's so good. So that's a big thing for Sean. That's what temperature this is. Yeah, Sean's normally like the tippy toe, I'll get a, a limb in. I, I wet my arms yeah, and slowly and get in. She works, works herself up to it, but here it's just like head first, straight in, boom. I don't even think about it here, yeah. I just get in. Oh, it's beautiful. Here you go. No, yucky, yucky, uh-uh, don't eat that. Just for looking at. The other thing that's in this area, and I don't know why, there's a lot of figs. Oh, they're everywhere. They're floating all through the water. Like you pay, what, 10 bucks for an eight pack of these at Woolworths, and they're everywhere. Like, look at all of them. Heaps of them. That's only just a handful. And that's just what you can see. There's like thousands of them floating down from up the stream there, so. Uh, if you're into your figs, you can sit in a beautiful pool like this and smash figs all day. And um, the other thing that's here, up in the like treetops and sense, there's a lot of bats. Yeah. I guess because of the fruit. 
I was thinking about getting my drone out, but I don't know if I want to uh, disturb them all. <laughs> that could be very interesting. How did you lose your drone to a bat? Yeah. Well, we've been to areas before that say that you shouldn't fly your drones because of bats. Yeah. So. Oh, well, they go nuts. The high pitched noise, I guess, would get them all going. Yeah. We're nearly up all the stairs. So if you're in Catherine, um, the hot springs, they're really easy to find. They're like right in the middle of town and they're well worth it. Um, it's been cool, eh? It's, oh, it's been really cool, yeah. The fact that it's like in town and um, it's all free. There's plenty of areas there and places you can get in. There's a little waterfall, which you would have seen in the footage. Uh, there's figs everywhere and bats. So the bats are probably the only downfall if they were to poo on you or something, but... Overall, they're not that bad. In hindsight, not much. Hang on. Just bringing the pram up. So we've just made it to the top ditch experience. We're just parked up. Would you like to come over and um, hold a wallaby? Oh, yes. Uh, the little girl. This is um, sweet pea. Sweet pea. I'll just see. Oh. Now if you just, hold, just, some, now just hold it up to make sure she's getting it all yeah. the time. There you go. Uh, I feed my brother yeah. sometimes. Do you have a bottle? <laughs> he just had his. <laughs> so pretty. How cute is she? Aww. Her name's Sweetie. Was it sweet pea, I thought? Yes, sweet pea. She's a little. She is. She's a baby wallaby. Oh. Oh. Nope, there she goes. She's doing a wee. <laughs> oh, good. That's a good girl. Molly. Molly. From English, Pigeon. This one made from black wood tree. Already old from white hands or German. the bottom and then move one hand up and then yeah. the other hand because you got to keep it pushed in the hole and the last one <laughs> oh. have you ever done it before eh? no never first time fine keep going You nearly got it. Stop. 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 See that? See that ah. one there? there? See? Hey, okay, Amber. Wow. Hey. Sorry, Amber. Hey. You helped me. Time. You got it started, yeah. though. <laughs> Put him there. All right. You warmed it up. I made a fire. I want you to blow straight then, but not too hard. Try gently. Come up closer from top. Blow, stop, blow. Keep going. Keep going, bro. Bro. Keep going. Not too hard. It's straight down. Yep. Stop. One more again. Keep going. Couple more people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, but the problem is strong over there. Spiky. Yeah. Turn your head. Yeah, turn your face away. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Women make fire. <laughs> 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 Like just the best cultural experience I think we've done yet. Yeah, by far, definitely. Like I was just saying there before to the owner, just saying that it's nice to get up close and then have like a really, I don't know, personal level of what they go through and what they do yeah. and how they'll breed, whether how they're brought up, the things they had to learn, and then what they the see. The non-Western way. Yeah, and then what they see from their old days as a kid out in the bush to what they are exposed to now and sort of everyday life so and it was really interesting he explained to us his experience of the first time he saw a white person yeah you know which is the complete opposite way around to the way we always think about things and like that, that's really special that he's happy to talk about those things and be really open about it with us like yeah it was really cool but he, he compared a lot of things too to what we do but what yeah. how they do things yeah so they do things quite similar but obviously not the same way as us but he compared it and sort of yeah. makes it make sense and then I don't know if you saw I lit a fire yeah she even got a certificate for it <laughs> I was like really proud hey when I first saw them bring out the little pile of grass I thought it was a bird's nest I thought we were going to talk about birds and then it was to make a fire and I did it and because of it certificate oh, this <laughs> <laughs> is going up on my wall because I'm actually very proud yeah I've never made a fire well I had everybody without a lighter. everybody had a go <laughs> and it was only me left that I was keen to have a go but then she got the certificate and Lit the fire, so I missed it. Sorry, babe. It's alright. And then we've actually got one of Manuel's works of art himself. So he's painted this, so I'll get that out later and give you a look at that. Yeah, cool. Um, but he does all his own works of art that are in the gallery. There's also other people from the same communities and the same tribes and that that also do their work and surrounding areas. So mm. it's really cool too when you buy something here, you're supporting the local communities as well. And yeah you know their lifestyle and after the, I was just saying like after doing these little paintings that we made mm. and like how much detail and all the things we got to do with it like it makes you really appreciate how like, much work. the paintings that you see now yeah. in shops and like souvenir places like it, it just it now gives me an understanding of yeah. the time and effort that goes into these things you see lines and dots and think oh I could do that but yeah, I'll tell you what a piece of cake. <laughs> It's, it's not that easy, and especially really to get hot. them really close and get it really yeah. nice. Like, like the yeah. full detail in there. With the traditional paintbrushes too. It's, mm. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. So yeah. If you're heading up through Catherine, it's called the Top Ditch Cultural Experience. You can find them on Instagram, Facebook, internet. Um, most tourist places as well have their brochures as well, so you've only got to ask about it. Mm. It is really, really worth it. It's an affordable price. It's what was it 9 30 10 30 11 30 two and a half hours so yeah. a really great price for two and a half hours to spend a lot, with manual a lot of information there yeah lots it's to learn awesome. it is really cool and the owners here as well that work with manual manuals the man who was doing the show 
the owners here, they're really helpful as well. So we had Jack with us and there was a couple of times where he was getting a bit windy yeah. and they brought out all the toys and you got Lego you know, like, and all sorts of stuff yeah. and they're looking after him while we're experiencing It's a real family feel environment. Yeah. With the cultural side as well. It's just it's awesome. It is really cool. Definitely yeah. come and check it out. Well, we're up early this morning. We're packing the car, getting a few nibblies. It's going to be a pretty big day today. We're off to Catherine Gorge. Anyone else like this stuff? It's a crisp thing. Love my seaweed. Yeah. I could eat like packets and packets and packets of that's it. That's why I had so many of them. <laughs> well, that's three probably won't be enough. <laughs> they don't exactly fill you too much, but they're nice to eat anyway. One's for Jada. I'll eat. <coughs> there you go. Oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, so we're for Catherine Gold this morning. We're going on a bit of a, a boat tour and a few other things. There's a bit of a couple of walking tracks and things like that, so pretty pumped for that. That Look is that. the national park name Nitmaluk. Nitmaluk. Whatever she said. <laughs> I just call it Catherine Gorge. Everybody knows that. But yeah. So, pretty keen to check it out and see what she's like. This is our last big sort of touristy thing we're doing in town. Mm. And then we are off in the morning and then we're heading up to Adelaide, Adelaide River. River. So, we'll be up there for maybe a night or two. Check it out around there. Yeah. I've got a list of things in the area. So, I'll, I usually just check it on the day we get there and then we kind of plan based on that. But. Mm. I mean, I haven't even booked our accommodation for tonight and we're going on a gorge tour, but I think we'll be staying here again one more yeah. night. Yeah, so, yeah, your guys... guess is as good as ours. Yeah. Oh, that one. Need the red tip, Jada. We're on a mission to find Chris a, um, red, a black cockatoo red-tipped feather for his hat. I found one, but it doesn't have a red tip. Like they're everywhere. There's like three or four in the tree up here. And there's no feathers. There's more up here. That's so cool, one. Sam, because it's literally like my favorite bird, bird ever. I just want one of their feathers with the red tip on it. I'll be happy as. I was just talking to the ladies there, checking in about the tour. And they said that we had the pram there. We love to give you good pram updates. You can bring the pram down to the boat ramp. You can take it onto the boat itself. It does make it a little squishy, but it's doable. But then the only problem is we have to do a walk between this tour, which is about 400 meters. And it's not exactly pram friendly, so you can take it pretty much to the boat, but then you'll have to leave it on the boat. But you can bring it back, but you can leave it at the boat ramp, you can leave it at the office, or just don't bring it at all. We've actually opted uh, just to pack everything into the bag. You see Sean's carrying Jack right now. And uh, we'll just yeah, hike along with him today, so shouldn't be too bad. We're on a boat most of the time. It's just that 400 meter walk, which is not far at all, really. It's great scheme of things. It's actually just back up here, like literally just behind me, there's a car park. So you can literally go inside, sign up, do all your jazz in there, come back out, drive your car down to the car park here, the boat ramp, and then literally just walk, oh, not even 20 meters, 30 meters if you're lucky, down to the boat ramp here. So that'll save you carrying the kids and that sort of drama. Straight onto the boat. <laughs> I really hope Jack stays really good today. <laughs> Fingers crossed. His new sleep times around midday, so. Yeah, it's as long hours. as he's got lots to look at, he should be fine. Yeah. Don't drop it. <laughs> How would that get in there? Alrighty, guys. So, we're going to make our way up to the top of the first gorge. Now, between our first and our second gorge, there is a short walk. It's about 500 metres, just around that natural block of water. For those of you walking through to the second though, we'll jump on a boat in the second gorge, make our way up to the top of the set, oh sorry, halfway up the second gorge, um, where we'll go for a bit of a swim today. So, should have about half an hour's swim time, 
and um, yeah, then we'll jump back on the boats and make our way back down to the main jetty soon. Like the first recorded expedition to take place up here. Yeah. It was led by a Scotsman in 1862. His name was John McDowell Stewart. And it was actually his sixth and successful trip across the continent at that period of time. But look, the other type of crop that we do get in here is a freshwater crocodile. And on the right hand side here, this beach that we're passing is actually a nesting site for freshwater crops. I don't believe that there are any nests left in there. I think they have all hatched now. So we've just made it to the end of the first gorge so they basically park a boat up and then we've got about a 500 meter walk so this is the second bit where we said we'll have to carry jack and we go up to the second gorge so this is like a rock ledge that separates the lower gorge to the next one and we're only seeing two out of 13 so yeah. during wet season they join together and become one uh, but in dry season when the water level goes down there's 13 of them so yeah, we're going to go for a walk, um, yeah. we'll show you along the way. It's beautiful so far. Yeah. This is like amazing. It's exactly what it looks like in the photo. to the swimming hole this is insane almost speechless like even the water clear as so keen to get in can you stand there holy oh you can stand yeah What's that doing? Oh, wow. What do you reckon? That is so good. Yeah? That is amazing. It's the best temp. After doing the walk and being out here in the heat. Unreal. Makes it all worth it, hey? Oh, yeah. Jack did a poo when we were on the boat. <laughs> and I could smell it but because we were going and we were at the very back no one else could smell it so we don't have wet ones so I'm gonna somehow clean his bum Hey mate! What's wrong? Do you think you'd be happy right now? You think? Really? Somebody tired. Jade is over there. Can you see her? We'll probably when we get on the boat give him that bottle. Yeah. <laughs> What a spot. It's a bad place to come for a swim. What's going on? It's like he's a little newborn again, babe. Yeah, the way I'm bloody feeding him. Yeah. Whoa. Keep those legs shut, mate. We don't want to see that. <laughs> feeding a newborn child at the Catherine Gorge. How close to nature do you feel? I never thought I'd ever do this. <laughs> I'm coming out from Catherine Gorge and feed a baby. So I thought I'd just give you an idea on what tours they have going at the moment. So technically this is off season and this particular tour wouldn't run, um, but they're running one which is a two gorge tour with a swim, which is obviously what we're doing now. Normally this also includes the canoeing, but because of the wet season, when the rain comes through, yeah. you know, the troubles with having the canoes available and that, it doesn't always work. <gasps> so we paid uh, 97 per adult for this. 
We paid 97 <laughs> per adult for this and I'm pretty sure it's 59. 59 for Jada and Jack of course is free. Uh, but for what's been included so far and all the information and stuff has been really cool. The boats themselves usually take 60 people, but because of COVID, they're having a maximum of 30. And I think there was 28 of us. Yeah, 28. Yeah. And There's still a fair few of us, considering it's like not the year or the season to do it. But it's really spacious as well. Like you're not yeah. in each other's pockets or anything. There's heaps of room. The only time you're near each other really is on the boat. So it's it's still very well, well worth Well, considering it. it's a 60-person boat and there's only 30, yeah. well, just less than 30, they've been trying to just keep them at a minimum of 30. Maximum. Well, maximum, sorry, of 30, <laughs> just to give people space and a bit of room to sort of, you know, separate from each other. So it's been, it's been really good. It's actually a really nice tour. Yeah. The fact you get to sit on the boat. If you come through here though. Yeah. Oh, definitely come and check it out. Yeah, sitting on the boat, checking out all the drawers, all the all the uh the sights. It's yeah, it's definitely worth it. Don't mind nudie bum Jack if you've had a couple of flashes there. I've been trying to keep him a bit covered up, but yeah. <laughs> it's just easier than carrying wet togs because all we've got on us at the moment is the backpack and yeah. it's got all the camera gear as well, so it's like oh we try wet to pack togs the whole are not day. the best. Yeah. One bag for everything with a family who record YouTube. <laughs> it's it's fun. <laughs> Warmer here. It's echoey, isn't it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hanging out for some Jack Spam? Well, next episode is a bit different to normal and is all about Jack. We run through Jack's typical daily routine and give you some tips and tricks that we like to use while living with a one and a half year old on the road.